When I decided to do a variety show, I thought about the programs I used to see when I was a kid in New York. They were good, clean fun and nonviolent, something for the whole family to enjoy. Every week you'd meet future Hollywood stars, comedians and magicians. The music would be jazz, rhythm and blues, salsa, and even Dixieland. And sometimes you'd see comedy sketches. I miss that kind of variety show. And if you do too, you're gonna love Norma's Place. If you met my guest Frank Ferranti at a party, you'd say, nice friendly guy, charming. But if you saw him on stage, this is what you'd get. Watch this. We were hot, and not even Chico could stop us. Our next show was called The Coconuts. Berlin wrote the music, Kaufman and Riskin the book. It was about the Florida land boom, and I played the hotel manager. Hello, Coconut Manor. What's that you say? The lady in 304 wants some ice water? Look, tell her to peel an onion. That'll make her eyes water. <laughs> Hello, Coconut Manor. Why, yes, sir, we have one room left, but you'll have to make your own bed. You don't mind? All right, that's room 416. Hello, housekeeping, go to room 416, bring a hammer, nails, and some wood. <laughs> that's the whole joke. <laughs> Hello, Coconut Manor. Why, of course we have a dining room. If it's meat, we have it. If it's fish, we have it. If it's fowl, we've had it too long. <laughs> I love you. I need you. How's that? Come on. Ah, my sweet. Your bell hop just ripped off my dress. Why didn't I think of that? Well, what are you gonna do about it? Well, here's the key to my room. I'll meet you there in two hours. I'm a nice girl. Then make it one hour. Well, I never. Then make it ten minutes, honey. <laughs> was sophisticated humor like that <laughs> that made us the toast of Broadway. <laughs> Are you expecting somebody? Hello, I must be going. I cannot stay, I came to say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. La la. <laughs> sake you must stay if you should go away you spoil this party i am through i came here to fight for your honor which is probably more than you ever did <laughs> oh let's forget about all this foolishness why don't we get married oh, but captain you're already married that would be bigamy well be bigamy too <laughs> i'll stay a week or two i'll stay the summer through but i am telling you I must be going. Before you go, would you oblige us and tell us all your deeds so glowing? I'll do anything you say. In fact, I'll even stay. Good. But I must be going. There's something that I'd like to say that he's too modest to relay. The captain is a moral man. Sometimes he finds it trying. This fact I'll emphasize with stress. I never take a drink unless somebody's buying. The captain is a very moral man. If he hears anything obscene, he'll naturally repel it. I hate the dirty joke I do unless it's told by someone who knows how to tell it. Science and rest his life for science. Hey, hey, ha, ha! Hooray for Captain Small!
Welcome to the show. Thank you, Norma. Great to be here. Oh, I tell you that uh, I don't know. You can't say enough about Groucho. So let's talk about you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Good. Good. Good way to start. Count me in. Okay. Um, how long have you been doing Groucho? I have been performing professionally in that role for 16 years since 1985. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You were a child. Yeah, just yes, a mere child. Actually, I was 22 years old, right out of college. Really out of USC. Uh -huh. What did your parents have to say about that? You know, they were actually, they were happy about it because the circumstances were interesting in that I did this one-man show at USC and I invited Groucho Marx's son, Arthur Marx, mm -hmm. and Groucho's daughter, Miriam, and a guy named Maury Riskin. Uh -huh. Maury Riskin collaborated with George S. Kaufman. The two of them wrote Animal Crackers, The oh Coconuts gosh, and that at the course. Opera, two of the funniest, probably most brilliant American comedy writers yes, of indeed. the last century. Indeed. And so, so this was my senior project. So. I think my folks were, were okay with the fact that they, they uh, ponied up some dough for me to go to USC because it did pay off. Uh -huh. Arthur Mark spot, you know, was in the audience when I did this one-man show, An Evening with Groucho, uh -huh. and he hired me for his show, which was called Groucho Life and Review, in which oh. I get to portray this man. I mean, no, what honor could be more than that than to play someone's yeah. father? He was so. a one of a kind. He really was. Absolutely. Well, I know that in uh, 1987, uh, you took the show to Broadway, off-Broadway, and you won the New York Theater's World, what is it called? It's the New York Theater World Award. World Award. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it was it was really an honor. It's 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 given to the um, new town, the new like they call it, standing talent in New mm -hmm. York, which was a thrill. I mean, I didn't expect it. Right. And uh, yeah, in, in New York in 1986, we we go out there, and I, I there I get a chance to play Groucho's life from age 15 to 85 in this play written by Groucho Marx's son Arthur Marx, oh, along with uh, with Robert Fisher. Wonderful. And it was a thrill to come from here Los Angeles uh -huh. and to and to make your debut in New York at That's age 23 exactly playing this like you said this incredible life yeah it, amazing I mean uh, true there there were the brothers of course who we're all familiar with mm -hmm. but Groucho was the, the I guess he was the rock that kept it all together he was, and I think people remember Groucho the most because he had a solo career with You Bet Your Life. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life, oh, say the secret indeed, word. indeed, indeed, right, and, the, and a duck will come down, right over. That's right. For, yeah, for really cool. 14 years, he, he did You Bet Your Life. So he, right. had, a, he had a life beyond the Marx Brothers. And the Marx Brothers were, were around mm -hmm. since the turn of the you know, last century, since yeah. the 19-teens. Right. And didn't, didn't make movies until the late 20s. Uh -huh. But you're right, Groucho always seemed like the spokesman because he was the verbal, the verbal member. Well, yeah, and of course Harpo didn't say a word. No, so. <laughs> and, and what Chico said was in broken English. So you had, right. you had a guy who couldn't speak, a guy who spoke too much, and a guy who didn't speak well. Yeah, didn't and so, speak and well. so you had the gamut of these, uh, of, of, was, of verbal humor and nonverbal humor. Yeah. And Groucho's, what made Groucho great, I think, was the ability to combine uh, physical humor with verbal yeah. humor. I mean, yeah. he had those great. I mean, th 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 those great. That great mm -hmm. physicality. He oh. could jump over couches and oh. he could do that great Captain Indeed. Spaulding dance. Yes. And he was also. Yes. People would go back, I and mean, I've met people who've seen my show, mm -hmm. who'd seen Groucho back in the 20s. And they'd have to oh. go back three or four times to see the coconuts on Broadway uh -huh. because the dialogue was so fast and he was so fast and furious mm -hmm. with this great mm -hmm. with his great comedy. Yeah, indeed. And uh, not th people had never seen anything like that kind of comedy well, before. There's, well, there's been nothing since, since no, Groucho. No, and it's, ins it's inspired either. a lot of, of comedy. You yeah. know, from Woody Allen yeah. to shows like MASH on television and mm -hmm. a lot of radio. Was well, I'll tell you, it's time for it to come back. But an evening with Groucho yeah. um, scores in a different way. It's really Groucho yeah. at his most Groucho. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Groucho, it's uh, Groucho from the from the from Animal Crackers and Duck Soup, uh -huh. and it's the Groucho that sings. I sing, her, her, "Hello, I must be going." Hooray oh, for Captain I Spaulding, love that. Lady I the Tattooed love Lady, that. and I do yeah. a lot of ad libbing uh -huh. throughout that show. And so people go, "Well, why should I go see?" Uh, someone perform as Groucho Marx when I can write the films, but what Aww. makes Groucho interesting? I mean, I don't hear that often, but I mean yeah. that could be a thought of of someone. And that what makes it interesting is, is very few people have seen Groucho Marx perform live. Absolutely. And that's what Absolutely. I would like to. I, I want to share that kind of danger. Groucho right. Marx was right in your face. Groucho Marx was was dangerous. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to tell you, I, I I love the fact that this is a talk show, but I think the entertainment part is what we we need more of. I'm with you, right? Norma.
At All Valley Barbecue Spa and Fireplace, we're number one in outdoor fun. We offer performance, quality, and value in all our products. We sell palapas, barbecue islands, and equipment, jacuzzis, billiards, heaters, smokers, and fireplaces. So come to All Valley Barbecue Spa and Fireplace to see the possibilities at our Highway 111 showroom in Indio or visit us on the web. Remember, we're number one in outdoor fun and guaranteed to make your cooking good looking. Experience the beautiful 640-acre Indian Palms Country Club and Resort with its 27-hole USGA golf course. A complete resort, the La Palma Restaurant and Bar is open to the public. Mingle for Monday night football, enjoy Thursday pasta night or Saturday steak with vintage wines. The elegant Palm Terrace Events Facility is perfect for weddings, birthdays, and family parties for up to 250 guests. Indian Palms Country Club and Resort, located at 48th and Monroe. Call 760-775-4444. When I got married, I wanted a platinum-style wedding. My dress and flowers were perfection. My wedding day was so amazing. Unfortunately, I let a friend shoot the video, and he used his home video camera. What a mistake! Enjoy your wedding day and let Platinum HD Wedding Video Professionals and their Emmy Award-winning staff capture the precious moments of your biggest day on DVD and Blu-ray. Platinum HD Weddings. It's the ultimate way to remember forever. Bring okay. on the entertainment. <laughs> okay. Why don't we look at some vintage Groucho, yes. shall we? Okay. Let's see some. Now, at this time, we were known as the Four Marx Brothers, but we are still using our given names. Our nicknames were the inspiration of a comic on the bill with us named Art Fisher. He had a habit of giving people nicknames that stuck. He dubbed Lenny Chico because he always chased the chicks. He did very well with that, I might add. <laughs> Adolph became Harpo for obvious reasons. Milton wore gum-soled shoes, rain or shine, so he called him Gummo. Zeppelins were a big thing in those days, and that's when Herbie became Zeppo. He always was full of hot air. <laughs> I was the serious one. I was the grouch. I was the grouch who made sure everybody got to work on time and that Chico didn't make off with a weekly take to gamble on the nearest pony. And that's when Julius became Groucho. Well, Home Again continued to be a big hit. We even played the palace. And in those days, my life was going great. Except in one area. The area that Chico excelled in. And I don't mean the piano. Hi, toots. Let's go to bed. <laughs> okay! <laughs> I could strangle my mother for not giving me piano lessons. <laughs> I can't tell you how many girls Chico took away from me. Chico always had all the girls he ever wanted. But was he satisfied? No, he decided to get married. Thank you. <laughs> The girl he married was a beautiful, brown-haired chorus girl named Betty Carp. And Chico fell madly in love, as only Chico could. As tribute to this, they were married a whole three days before he started cheating on her. <laughs> I think I'll take a leaf out of Chico's book. So, uh, you're a music lover, eh? Uh-huh. Well, I'm a singer, you know. Uh -oh. I wanna be loved by you, by you, and nobody else but... <laughs> well, what are we wasting time for? Hey, baby, let's go to bed. <laughs> this walk.
since I wasn't getting anywhere with the girls, I decided to get married. <laughs> you know how it is. <laughs> and so does she. Her name was Ruth Johnson. I tell you, Ruth was a beauty. Well, Ruth went for me because I had the most funny lines in the act. Why that would make a difference, I don't know, because she had no sense of humor. <laughs> in fact, I don't even know how she knew I was funny. Somebody must have told her. <laughs> and incidentally, it wasn't easy for the two of us to get married, you see? My parents were Orthodox Jews. Ruth's mother was an Orthodox anti-Semite. <laughs> and the Marx brothers were riding high. We were working for E.F. Alby, czar of almost every vaudeville house in the country. He was paying us two grand a week. Now, I thought we deserved more. When he wouldn't give it to us, I played a harmless little joke on him. I set his office on fire. <laughs> Alby didn't think that was too funny. Obviously, he had no sense of humor. <laughs> Well, that little joke, that little joke got us banned from Vaudeville throughout the entire country. Things were pretty bad. I had a wife and a son to feed. I wasn't making a living. Hey, Julie! Hey, Julie, where are you? I'm in here. In where? The closet? No, I'm in the bathroom. What are you doing in there? Pipe down. You're gonna wake Ruth and the baby. What are you doing in the tub? Where else can you read late at night in a one-room apartment? I don't know. I can't read. Hey, Julie, <laughs> guess who I was playing poker with last night? Whoever you were playing poker with last night has your money this morning. Right, but he's also got a legit theater in Philadelphia, and nothing is playing there right now. Well, what do we know about legit theater? We're vaudeville performers. This guy, he wants to put a play in there. I told him that we had one with a great book and great music. Ah, that's terrific. You told him we have it with great book and great music. Where are we going to get anything like that? I don't know, but we open in two weeks. <laughs> Why wait? I'm not doing anything tonight. <laughs> we can use all our old vaudeville routines, and he's got a lot of leftover costumes and leftover scenery from his last flop. Does he have any leftover bad reviews? Because that's what we're going to get. <laughs> hey, listen, boss. This guy, he wants to get into show business in the worst way. <laughs> You're a little ahead of me over there. <laughs> Try to keep time with the jokes, will ya? Hey, listen, boss. <laughs> this guy, he wants to get into show business in the worst way. Well, he puts us on stage. I think he's found it. Now you can laugh. <laughs> Remember, boss, ballerinas don't dance on Yum Kippa. I'm glad you understood him. Well, we had no choice but to throw together a show. And that we did. We decided to throw together a mishmash of our old Bodby routines to match the scenery and costumes this guy had in his theater in Philadelphia. We called this mishmash, I'll Say She Is. We called it I'll Say She Is because we don't know what else to call it. Well, we took I'll Say She Is on the road for a year and we finally got a shot in New York. The name of the place was the Casino Theater. I'll Say She Is was a smash in New York too and what made us? Was that one of New York's most prestigious critics, Alexander Walcott? He just loved us. Well, he liked us. He loved Harpo. When knocked him out of his seat was a routine that Harpo did with Mrs. Rittenhouse. You see, Harpo and I were guests of Mrs. Rittenhouse in her palatial home. <laughs> Your honesty's at stake. Did you take anything from here that belongs to Mrs. Rittenhouse? Do you swear? <laughs> and congratulations, I knew you're not an honest man. <laughs> yeah, that could happen to anybody. You were sitting under breakfast, you got up, and a couple of pieces of silverware fell into your sleeve. <laughs> Is that the last of it? Do you swear? Do you swear that you're as honest as the day is long? <laughs> now, congratulations. I think the day just got shorter. Either that or it's on daylight stealing time. You uh, swear there's nothing more up your sleeve. Now, congratulations.
since you're now an honest man. In the twilight of my career at 57 years old, luck struck again. And there he is, the one, the only. That's me. <laughs> welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the sacred word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common wide something you see every day. You know, I used to wipe with a fellow who looked exactly like you. His name was Chico Marx. I'm a Chico Marx. You're Chico Marx? I'm a Chico Marx. Well, no wonder why you look like him. But I still insist there is a resemblance. <laughs> it's funny. He thinks I look alike. And if you do, it's a tough break for both of you. Now, Chico, I'll get back to you later. But first, I'd like to talk to this lovely young lady. Yeah, that's all right. I can't blame you. Now, lovely young lady, what's your name? Oh, uh, Catherine Dubois Groucho. Catherine Dubois Groucho, wonderful name. <laughs> that sounds French. Uh, yes, that's right. My husband is French. Ah, you're married. Yes. And do you have any children? Oh, uh, yes, I have 12 children. <laughs> Well, children, that's quite a habit your husband has. <laughs> well, everybody has habits. You have that cigar of yours. Yes, but I take it out once in a while. The gentleman sitting with me really needs no introduction, but in case there's one person out there who doesn't know who he is, may I present Groucho Marx. Oh, go on. That's me, Groucho Marx. Oh. Hello, Norma, I love you. Oh, oh thank you, darling. He's I'm brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. So glad to see you. Nice to see you, too. Yes. We'll do this again sometime. Of course. Have you been keeping busy? Well, I'm, I'm here. How busy can I possibly be? Oh, well, my goodness. This and is I mean just... that in the most loving way possible, of oh, course. Of course. Of course, my dear. Don't ever leave me again. No, I won't. Um, you are famous for so many things, but I never realized how the, your quotations have just taken over the English language. Well, I thank you. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm, I have a feeling you'd like to hear a few. Yes, I would. Is yes, there any in particular you'd like to hear? Um, I like that one about uh, something about uh, you in your pajamas. Yes, well, that's the great one from Animal Crackers. One morning, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How I got in my pajamas, I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. Not even the producer. The producer fell asleep minutes ago. <laughs> the are, you, are you the producer? Uh, yes, I am, sir. You're the whole thing? Yeah. Like I said before, the producer fell asleep minutes ago. Well, as long as the director doesn't fall asleep, though, we won't have a problem. There's a director? Are you here, Mr. Director? I just wanted lunch. That's all I wanted. Right. <laughs> like, I have a, there are a lot of great quotes. Let's... If I may. If I may. Oh, yes, of course. If are I there... may. Yes. Thank you. Are there a couple more you'd like well, to... I always uh... like the one when, uh, when I went to the, um, the anti-Semitic country club. Yes. And they welcomed me until they found out I was a Jew. Yes. And uh, they wouldn't let me go and bring my, my child into the water. I said, well, since my son's only half Jewish, can he go into the water up to his knees? <laughs> I and, love of course, that. The, other, the other club joke would be, <laughs> run a club joke. I, I, I like to join a club and beat you over the head with it, quite frankly, Norma. Oh. Again, that was my way of loving you, oh, Norma. Oh, of course. Thank you. You're a regular you. Margaret Dumont. Uh-huh. I can see you right now in the kitchen bending over a hot stove. Oh. But I can't see the stove. <laughs> come, come, say the word, you'll never see me again. Oh. No, ma. This is wonderful. Oh, well, that's debatable. You're a great guest because I really don't have to say anything. I can just sit here and laugh. Well, go ahead. When are you going to start? <laughs> well, there you go. It's about time, too. Okay, let's yes, start. Let's talk a little bit. Um, what should we tell people about you that they don't already know? Oh, all right. I yes. know what I want to talk about. Go ahead, Norma. It's your show. All right. Um, your television show. Yes. Was one of the greatest. Welcome, welcome, you bet your life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Right. George, bring on the next contestant. Great, George You Fenneman. bet your life. George Fenneman, right? Fourteen years. Yeah, great on, guy. On television, ten years on television yeah. on NBC. What happened to the duck? The duck? The duck, I, I live with the duck still. You do? Yes. Wonderful. It pays rent, but, I, but it, it's worth it. Yeah, that's great. It great. has its ups and downs. <laughs> yes, I noticed. You remember? I, I remember, up and down. Yeah, the that was pretty word. cool. Right. And um, 
You worked with your brothers yes, all I those did. years. And Harpo, you, you, Checo, Zeppo, Gummo. You looked like you were so close. And were you really? We loved each other. Ah, we we grew up on stage together from the time we were yeah. teenagers. Imagine, yeah. imagine yeah. being on stage and watching your brother grow as a human being, as a yeah. person, right. and then develop this persona. And yeah. I got to see Checo become the Italian-accented piano playing brother that he was, and Harpo, of course, the great yeah. mute uh, harp playing right. comic. And but whose idea was it that Harpo should not talk? We, it happened early on. I, uh, our Uncle Al Sheen of Gallagher and Sheen wrote a act for us. Right, Vaudeville. And he gave me all the lines. Uh -huh. And he gave Harpo one line. And he didn't do it very well. Uh -huh. but, but his pantomime was terrific. I see. And so uh, we, it, there really wasn't a lot of competition. And Harpo found his niche. Mm -hmm. And my niche was, was Vrabel. Very good. Well, you know, I, I notice, um, I hear the, the way you speak certain words that come out uh, very New York. Yes, well, that's where we're from, New York. Yeah, well. As, I, as are you. Uh, Yes. I read but, your bio. But I, Oh, thank you. But uh, my There mother, were no magazines out in the lobby. <laughs> I had to read. Her bio's all over the place. <laughs> Not a magazine in sight. <laughs> the, the problem was, you see, when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. my mother said... That is a problem. Uh, that is a problem. My mother said, if you ever sound like you come from Brooklyn, uh, you might as well pack your bags and leave the house. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that time. The way in your time, it was different. We use, we use the voice for comic effect. Yeah, indeed. Nobody cares if a comedian sounds like this. Huh. They prefer it. They prefer it. They do? Is there an echo in here? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Some, that was you? <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's... Are you repeating? I'm repeating, Somebody's yes. repeating. Uh, didn't we have onions on those sandwiches? We didn't have a sandwich, Norma, to, to remind you. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not a catered <laughs> affair, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, before I ask you another question... Please. May I talk to my audience? I wish you would. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to... Is this going to gonna take long, no, Norma? No, dear. All right. I would like to encourage you to... Who is your audience, by the way? Oh, my goodness. There's like two million wonderful oh, people out there. Two million there. wonderful people. Yes. All right. Go ahead, Seeing Norma. you, and hopefully a lot of new people that have never Nude seen... Nude people? New. New. New people. Anyhow, please send me your email, which will be shown at the end of the program. And um, Groucho, you know, appears around town all the That's time. That's right. And we'll hook you up with him. And, and if you'd like to learn more about, about Groucho <laughs> Marx... You can, you can actually, I'm, I've entered the, the new century, you can actually look it up on Groucho World. Groucho ah. World. And if you want to learn more about my brothers and, and my yeah. life, yeah. And younger folk can learn about Groucho Marx as well. Wow. Well, that's really cool because um, a whole new generation needs to know about your kind of comedy. Bless you, Norma. You know, five oh, I mean books that came sincerely. out. Oh, really? Well, really five do. books came out on, on me last year alone, mm -hmm. including a new one that my son wrote called Arthur Marx's Groucho with photos of of yours truly, making movies and behind the scenes with my mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Very proud of that. I'm very proud of my son, Arthur. Great, great, yeah. The whole family has done so well, much. That's a remarkable gang. Mm -hmm. Who, who's, this, who's this schnook over here? Oh. That director is saying <laughs> speed it up. That, is that what he wants what, us That's to what do? that means, or is he lassoing? He's yes, like, well. He's doing the Will Rogers <laughs> imitation very badly, I might add. <laughs> Hello, I must be going. I cannot stay. I came to say I must be going. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Well, that was subtle. Yes. Well, thank you for I, having me. Yes. Well, I, I mean that in a very nice way. I'm sure you do, dear. I can't wait to see you again real soon, okay? I can't wait to see you, too. Okay, dear. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.